What? It's not even scratch and sniff. Hi everyone, you're watching The Broken Meeple, a show devoted to boarding card games, and I'm Luke Hector. Who? Got a nice colourful one here for you, Canvas. This is a Kickstarter that I didn't get involved with because I thought it was too expensive at the time, but I like these games that focus on really nice colourful artwork like this. I mean, look at that cover, it is gorgeous and it loops around the box and everything. The Dixit games, Kanagawa, those sort of ones that just put you in a nice pleasant mood when you're looking at really nice pictures, I do get a kick out of those. This one I heard is super light and so, you know, it's nice to take a break and actually review a game that isn't a three hour long monstrosity. And it does have a lot of accolades on the back, although to be honest, most of them are just Golden Geek Awards and Dice Tower Awards. I mean, there is a seal of excellence in the Dice Tower here, but most of these accolades are all about an award for something like box covers and artwork, which granted, yeah, it does have a very nice box cover and artwork, but you know, a game cannot be great just because it looks pretty. I need it to also be fun to play. So this is my chance to finally delve into a game that has been long on the bucket list and hopefully it's worth the trip. As a fellow gamer, you'll understand this is unacceptable. The solution? Head down to my new sponsor, kiender.co.uk. Kiender stocks many of the hot new releases as well as some old hidden gems. Free delivery on orders over £30, further discounts on bulk purchases, and even 5% of your spending refunded back to you as points to be used for further discounts down the line. If you use the referral link in the description below and sign up for a new account, you'll get 5% discount on your first order over £60. So let's make gaps in your collection a thing of the past. Get down to Kiender and start saving today. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the video. Get on with it. Canvas is a super light game. This will probably be the shortest overview I ever do. Basically, you are creating cards with artwork in them in order to score points by matching up various symbols and colors. You will have a selection of scoring cards at the start of the game, and these will score you ribbons if you can meet the criteria. You know, have more of a symbol than another, get free matching in a row, simple stuff like that. Players will then have three background cards in the hand. So these form like the staple of your art, and these are basically sleeve tarot sized cards. What then happens is that from this box of transparent sleeved cards, so think of like Mystic Veil vale and all those games that we've seen that use this type of thing now, it's becoming more commonplace, you essentially have a bunch of them out in a row. And then what happens is players take it in turns to draft a card from here to have in their hand of which they can have max five. These inspiration tokens, these little art easels basically, you can use to skip ahead if you don't want to take a certain card and then you take the one that's there and everything slides down. You've seen this in Century Spice Road, you've seen this in, oh, could buy a... Eventually. Majesty Secret for the Realm also has this. Uh, I'm slightly brain fired there is trying to find examples, but this is a common mechanic in a lot of games. And so the idea is, is that you will build up this hand of cards and what you can then do instead of taking a card is you can select three from your hand to slide into one of your background cards. You effectively create a piece of art and uh, hopefully I can find some better examples than the ones I just found there. But for example, I could take this uh, waterfall here, I could take these little like uh, Mayflower pink leaves and a cannon. Yeah, I suppose that all goes together in, a, in an art somehow. And what you do is that you choose the order you want to sleeve in and you create the art. Hopefully you can see it okay on the camera. But you know, besides making a nice pretty little picture, you have the symbols at the bottom which will correspond to the scoring cards to score points. So, you know, you've got the different color swatches, you've got various symbols that are basically abstracted, but they're essentially here to score points. And by the end of the game, you're gonna have three of these fully complete with a bunch of ribbons on them to say, oh, I matched this one so many times, and then you score up once everybody's got three sets of art cards. That's pretty much the game. Yes, that is not a lot to explain, is it? Yeah, moving on. Is that it? Yeah, that was a short overview, wasn't it? And well, that's kind of a selling point of this game. This is super light, absolute super light and fluffy. You don't love me! This game would float away if you didn't hold it down with a paperweight or something. It is that light. It's a gateway game through and through. Anybody who claims it's not is Frankly bonkers. <laughs> there is no way you can say this is anything but. You could have this on your shelf and it will appeal to a lot of gamers because of its aesthetics, more on that in a minute, but moreover, there's just not a lot of rules in the game. I mean, this rule book is bigger than it needs to be, mainly just because it also explains like some scenarios for making achievements, as if I ever cared about those in games. You've got a couple of variants for solo and one to two players, but honestly, I mean, game end, 
Complete a painting on your turn setup. I mean, there's the four pages. Uh, this bit is mainly just to explain the iconography. But uh, again, a lot of it is just pictures. So there's not a lot of text to read. And if you have played pretty much any game ever, this thing will be like apparent to you in less than two minutes. I, I sat down, got the stuff out and I thought, okay, let's read this. Done. And literally like short circuit. It was insane. I just got through it that quick and went, okay, that's the game. I shall teach it immediately. This is pick up and play levels of light, which is, you know, for what it is setting out to do, perfect. This is going to appeal to a lot of gamers, sorry, appeal to a lot of non-gamers and people who have never played a game before in their lives. You could literally show someone brand, brand new to the hobby this and they would totally get it. It's not complicated. It's not tricky at all. That's easy! And of course, you can't talk about this game without talking about the aesthetics. The aesthetics are. Hooey! They are gorgeous. Yes, they are really gorgeous. I mean, this lovely little mat here, which granted the expansions do replace it, which is a bit of a sad thing, but you know, if you have only got the base game, you've got this nice little mat here. You've got tarot sized cards. It comes with the sleeves. You don't have to buy extras. You've got a box of all these transparent sleeves here. There's quite a lot of them with like varying sort of degrees of different bits of art and stuff on them. I mean, I've just pulled out a few here that are fairly basic, but you can create some we're in wonderful paintings with these. You've got the tokens, which are really thick cardboard tokens, nice and colorful. The rule book is linen finished and thin. And the box is, you know, as artwork that loops around the back. It even goes to weird things like putting a little hole at the back so you can hang this up on your wall. Has anybody done that? Seriously, I can't imagine why you would. Because I mean, if this is hanging up on the wall, I don't know, you better trust the wall to hold this up with all the pieces in it. But that's just a weird thing I've never seen before. Not something I'm gonna do, but hey, if anybody else is, I'd be interested to see like a photo of the house. But this thing looks amazing. Now it's not the cheapest game in the world though as a result. I mean, you're fetching anywhere between the 30 to 40 pound mark to acquire this game and Whew, it's a high asking price for what is effectively the super simple introductory game that it is. You're certainly getting good production quality, but for a game this simple, I would probably have sacrificed a, you know, an aesthetic element here or there just to make it a little bit cheaper. Shut up and take my money. The gameplay is super quick, super fast. Turns do not take long at all. I mean, you have got to either pick a card or just make up one of the paintings. Your, your turn will take seconds. Even if you play this at the full count of five, the turns are gonna be snappy and quick and the game doesn't take long at all. I mean, the box I believe says, yeah, 30 minutes on the clock. Probably less than that even with less players. 30 minutes with five players. It really does not take more than a, like a minute to teach. And then you get away and then it's just snappy turns, snappy turns, snappy turns. You know, when it's not your turn, you can decide which ones you're gonna use to build a piece of art. But in terms of picking the cards, well, you've only got five on here. You've only got so many of these tokens. So there's not, maybe not too many options, but there's certainly like enough to do to fulfill a few seconds of a turn. And it just snaps along super, fast and it's kind of relieving to play something that takes such a short time to play and actually sticks the landing when it says it takes a short time to play. You know, stuff like Splendor is on the similar level to this in terms of elegance, simplicity and how short it is. A lot of games fall at the hurdle of going, we are a nice light short game. We're only 30 minutes long and then you play Century Spice Road with five players and you regret your decision immediately. It's you know, one of those things. But yeah, super snappy, super fast, even with a full count of five. Now, bearing in mind, you're not going to have like loads of choices and tons of strategy here. This is a light gateway game here, but there's enough to get you thinking. You have a choice of take a card or build one of your art cards. Now, part of the tension, especially when you have too many players, like four or five, is that you've only got so many of these inspiration tokens and you don't get any more unless you take them from the cards. So there is a decent amount of tension as to whether you're going to get the art piece that you really want. And if you start running out of these tokens, are you going to take one that's a little subpar in order just to get more inspiration tokens may be worth doing but even when you're trying to construct your art card at the end of the day you've still got choices as to what you do and how you slot it in because I could have five of these in my hand I only put three of them in the card and I choose which way round they go so you know some of these icons are going to cover each other up I mean, I could put, you know, mess and truth in the same card, but both of them are blue and yellow. So as soon as I put the first one in, second one completely covers it up. So you're, you know, you ideally want to get a mixture of colors because then you will have 
multiple icons on your card. You know, diversity is a good thing here. But yeah, we're not talking vast amounts of strategy, but there's enough to just make you like have a choice and actually take interest in what you're doing. And the gimmick of, oh, I've created this really nice art piece at the end is gonna wear thin after a while. I mean, there's only so much you can do with it, but you know, it will charm non-gamers. We gotta we gotta remember here, we're not playing this as, you know, Lacerda level, Mind Clash level, three hour long Euro gamers here. We're bringing our perspective to brand new gamers and even gamers who will play this for a nice light touch. You know, I've enjoyed my games of this so far. It's just been a nice filler to, you know, get out of the way quick. I mean, most fillers will not take the 30 minutes that it tells them to, and this one at least does. So yeah, not heavily strategic, but it was never aiming to be so. The replay value is probably a little limiting here. There's not a huge amount of variety with the cards themselves. I mean, you've got a decent amount in this box, but by the time you've played you know, a good few games, this, particularly with a lot of players, you'll have probably gone through most of these. And it's not like you're seeing, oh my God, a brand new game has opened up with different ones of these. It's just different pictures. And yes, there's a nice variety of all the pictures. Every single one of these is unique, but the game doesn't suddenly change scope. You know, there's nothing to say, oh, you know, now it's going to end up like this, or oh, this is a very different game. You've got a few different scoring cards in order to mix things up a little bit, but again, that only does so much, and there's only so many scoring cards in the game. So games are going to be a little rinse repeat. This is not something that I would say you would bring out and play all the time. Like maybe you would play it once as a filler and then you put it away, maybe twice max if you're introducing someone brand new and they just want something nice for the evening. But yeah, for most people, you'll bring it out, play it the once and be like, that was cool. Right, what are we moving on to next? As much as the storage is nice to have this box with the painting that goes all the way around and like a little hanging bit there, there is a problem I already foresee with this and spoiler alert, I already know this is coming in the next video, but you basically just have this tray and that's it. There's nothing else in there, no insert or anything. So you're basically just shoving everything in here. It leaves no room for expansions. And we know there's two already. So where do you think those expansions are going? They're not going in this box. And so as much as they've made a bit of a, a sort of fun little gimmick with the way this is designed, it's not future proof. And if you're planning to get this with expansions, you're gonna have to put up with a little bit of a poetic license with this. Although we'll go into more detail in the Beyond the Base Game video, but I'm just pre-warning you this now. When will then be now? Soon. Couple of little remaining minor niggles. There's no score pad in the box, which given that there's so much production value going into the fact that there's transparent cards and this little mat and that, the fact that there's no score pad in here just kind of seems a bit weird. Not that you've got to add up that much, but I mean, you're gonna have a collection of these ribbons by the end of the game and they're all gonna be worth different values. So I mean, would it have killed them just to put a basic score pad in there? I mean, where are you trying to cut costs at this point? Granted, your game already costs a lot more than most gateway games combined, but you know, come on, would the paper score pad have really gone that much? People on Board Game Geek will no doubt put resources up there that you can print off, but again, we shouldn't have to. There should be one in the box. Uh, the only other couple of minor niggles is the whole one and two player thing. Two player is not too bad, but you essentially play with like a simulated non-scoring player that basically kind of does things randomly with the inspiration tokens. I mean, it's fine, but not amazing. And the solo puzzle is pretty much where you have complete control of the cards, but you have kind of like a limited supply of the inspiration tokens to do what you want to do. And you're just basically going through to see what you can create. It's fine, but it's not really something I would say you've got to get this game for, you know, I mean, you're going up against a benchmark of solo games for light players like Cascadia. Cascadia, it's solo mode, is such a great little experience to do and has challenge to it. This one is mainly just a beat your own score with a couple of rules. I mean, it does the job, but it's not like I'm going to, it's not one that I feel like I'm going to pull out a lot to play solo and maybe not even with two. Three, four and five. Yeah, I could bring this out easily, but yeah, they've, you can tell that this game is more designed for three to five players and they had to basically find some way to add one and two on the box. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Canvas is not trying to commit any subterfuge or pull any strings here. It is what it is. It's a very light, super fluffy, artistic game with about two mechanics and a bit of scoring that's done and dusted in 30 minutes with five players. That is it. It's not trying to be anything more or bulky or more strategic. And in those aspects, it 
does a fantastic job. Now, is it a game that I'm going to want to play over and over again? No. Is it one that I'm going to bring to the club every week? Probably not. But it's definitely going to sit on my shelf as something that is ideal for non-gamers. For someone who is completely new to the hobby, this is something you want to have in your collection. But it's not going to be one that you're going to pull out and go, this was amazing fun. Oh, this gave me so much enjoyment. You know, I'm going to play it over and over again. You know, I foresee that this will come out every now and again because I have gone over some other gateway games that I like to show people. I mean, Cascadia is a bench Mark. So are games like Alice's Garden, for example. I still play Splendor and there's Ticket to Ride. And some of those games I'd probably enjoy more than this one from a gameplay perspective, but it is pleasant, it is light, it is super easy, super fast, and it is gorgeous to look at. So it is ticking a lot of good boxes. I'm giving it overall a 7 out of 10. It's a good game. There are two expansions to come. Maybe those will inflate the rating, you know, to give a little bit more sort of extra depth to the game. But as I said, it sets out to be a simple, fluffy, artistic game. And it does that very well. So I can't fault it for not necessarily being one that's you know going to be played over and over again. But 7 out of 10 I think is justified. It's good. I recommend it. And if you want something super light and you don't mind the inflated cost. I mean it is not a cheap game. We're talking 35, 40 pounds for this. It's not cheap I gotta tell you. But you know, which I know sounds ironic given that I'm, this is a Kienda review copy, but you know, you've got my code in the description. Feel free to use that. That will help. This is still a really solid game and definitely one to check out. So that's it for me on this week's episode of The Broken Meeple. If you like what you see, then please thumb it up on YouTube and thumb it up on Board Game Geek when it goes live on the page. Don't forget to check out the other content I've done recently. I've gone into a massive IB Games Studios, you know, Bonanza at the moment with Fractured Sky, Moonbreakers, and the expansion. So by all means, check out all of those. Until next time, remember, regardless of whether you are impressed with my fading surrender painting, kind of weird, it's still only a game. So bye for now.